welcome. We continue our worship with the Word of God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> This is 
the Lord's doing. And it is part of the God. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice in your hand. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, Lord is in the house of success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. On the procession of the branches of the Lord's God. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will follow you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The second reading is from the book of Revelation. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, 
was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in the side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, if you believe, because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord of Christ. So when we think about it, how is God revealed 
before anything was written down and designated holy scriptures. People learned about God through creation, of course. One might even say that creation is a sacrament, an expression of God. And yet we continue to mindlessly destroy large swaths of the Amazon rainforest, and we risk endangering America's Amazon in our own backyard. And thus we risk losing all of those ways of knowing God, all to suit our own consumption habits. I don't doubt that our life's work is to be loved by God and to bring that love into being in the world by working for justice, which is how we love others as God loves us. It seems to me that this is the basic human vocation. We commit ourselves to the well-being of all that God loves. Here at Redeemer, we've done that for decades with our feeding ministries and our homeless ministries and more recently with our animal ministry and our environmental ministry. But back to doubt. We often doubt because we can't see. As Brian McLaren says on this topic, people can't see what they can't see. Which reminds me of Jesus saying, you have eyes, but you do not see. You have ears, but you do not hear. Referring to modern day psychology, we are influenced by certain biases that make us unable to see. With these biases firmly in place, we fail to see structures of injustice because our blinders of social and economic privilege are firmly in place. That's one of my greatest fears that I don't see because of the blinders created by my privilege. I just can't see it. How do we have eyes and fail to see? Because we are blind to what blinds us. We have unconscious internal obstacles to seeing called biases. These biases create walls around us, making us unable to see what's on the other side. So if you'll bear with me, I would like to elaborate for a few minutes on the topic of biases. I never studied psychology, and so this is all, this kind of thinking is new to me and very eye-opening. I want to share a few insights that might provide some clarity regarding our doubts. One of the primary biases is known as confirmation bias. You've probably also heard it called how we frame our reality, or the lens through which we see the world, or if we're being truly honest, the box that we live in that we call our reality. When we receive new information, we run it through the filter of what we had already confirmed as true to see if this new idea fits. Jesus returning from the dead to visit the disciples didn't fit within Thomas's framing or confirmation bias. Sea level rise that is currently, this very day, inundating island nations and lands inhabited by mostly poor people who did nothing to cause the problem, doesn't fit within our framing of reality because it's not happening to us yet. It is only happening to those people on the other side of the world. Interestingly, confirmation bias doesn't happen because we want to behave unjustly or to be deliberately ignorant, but weirdly, because it's more efficient. We make hundreds of decisions daily, and we can't stop to analyze every single one. We just run them through our existing filters. We don't have time to see if this new information must cause us to alter our worldview to integrate it. We often just reject it if it doesn't fit within the existing framework. It's so much easier that way. It was easier for Thomas in today's gospel, and it's easier for us. There are a good dozen or major biases that affect how we process information, including complexity bias, where if it becomes too difficult to understand the new information, we'll just go with a simpler explanation, one that may not be true, but it's easier. For example, how many of us have started to think about climate change? 
but then deciding it's too complicated. It's easier not to think about it and just go on living as we always have. That's complexity bias. And then there's community bias. That's a big one for a church community. Humans cherish belonging and we fear being excluded. So if we start to explore an idea that doesn't fit within the biases of a particular church community, if we start to have doubts about certain teachings of the church, for example, that automatic fear response usually kicks in and we just drop it, or we don't talk about it. New ideas are not simply something that we have, that have to be reasonable to us or acceptable to us, but we also factor in that question of what will my community think of this? We only need to look to our gay brothers and sisters who wish nothing more than to have their love blessed by the church to know how difficult it has been to overcome community bias. There are many such biases that cause us to doubt what we're hearing about the environmental injustices and especially what we can do about them. Our challenge is not only to remove those blinders and see what's being done to the earth by the human community, but to then take action for the good of the rest of creation and for future generations. As the Reverend Margaret Bullock Jonas says when she preaches about climate change, uh, creation care, we know that destroying the earth is against our religion. Polluting the air is against our religion. Making life difficult for our neighbors around the globe is against our religion. Wrecking our children's future is against our religion. But the environmental issues we face are overwhelming. Unlike the Apostle Thomas, we actually have evidence of climate change right in front of us. But we must struggle to recognize what we are programmed not to see. And even if we work our way through all of the biases against understanding and owning these issues, we still doubt that there is anything that we can do to make a difference. In the face of this, hope is difficult which makes taking action difficult. But people acting in community, especially faith communities, can make a difference. A group here at Redeemer has been working with an organization called Romanzia Ministries to become a pilot climate resilience congregation. Looking to answer the question, how can our churches be hubs of resilience helping our neighbors weather the physical and spiritual storms of the climate crisis. Later this morning, the vestry has been invited to hear from Romanzia's staff about some ideas geared specifically to our church, based on research they have conducted on our behalf and on information that we have provided. Your part of this process so far has been to complete the emergency preparedness survey forms we send out. If you haven't turned yours in yet, ask yourself what bias is keeping you from doing so. All in all, I don't think that all doubt is a bad thing. Being skeptical and asking questions and discussing the issues from all sides is usually a good thing unless it leads to paralysis. But on this Earth Sunday, I would like to invite us to come out of our comfort zones, peek outside the frame, remove the lens, climb over the walls that we have erected, and try to understand with fresh eyes that see and ears that hear, and all so that we may be the love in the world that we are called to be in our little part of creation. Amen. Please join me as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in the Word of God. Father and Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God of the Father, God of the God, life from life, true God from true God, the God not made, of one being with the Father, for in him all things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven.
is in fact providing the leadership of the diocese. And that's something that we should all be very in tune with and supportive of. And uh, so it's, it's a privilege for me to be a small part of, of this outreach and this ministry. Thank you, love, again. She uh, was reluctant to call this a sermon. She said, what if I just say reflection? <laughs> but I think you would agree with me. That was a sermon. And I'm thankful for it. It is so good to see all of you. Uh, some of you, it's been a while since I, I've seen you, and I'm glad you're here. And uh, after our worship today, after we leave, we'll gather in the parish house for uh, refreshments and uh, in a nudge, a gentle nudge to members of the vestry uh, that we need for you to stay. And uh, as we continue our work uh, after the refreshments, it is a great joy to be here, a great joy to be among you. It is a gift indeed. And so once again, the good Lord invites us to his people. And we are all invited to gather around the Lord's table. Describe to him the honor in his name. For he gives your very lives into his presence with thanksgiving. Amen.
the Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is our duty and our joy to give you thanks and praise. O God, creator and sustainer of the universe, we give you thanks for the sun and sea and sky, for bush and birds, for phases of the moon, for stars at night, and planets in their courses. All you make is very good. For the universe, we praise you. We worship and adore you. We give you thanks for our creation and our calling, for friendship and community, for love and laughter, tears and pain of growing. For your gift of life, we praise you. We worship and adore you. We give you thanks those who went before us, with saints and martyrs, evangelists and prophets, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, from every culture, land and tongue, we praise you, with a voice to every creature, as we join the never-ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed in Christ. Blessed are you, most holy in Jesus Christ, who came among us as a servant and a friend to reconcile us to yourself. We thank you for that life of love, the good news of your reign, and the promise of abandonment for all your children shall be free. For your gift of Christ, we praise you. We worship and adore you. To you indeed be glory, Almighty God, because on the night before he died, your Son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. For new life in Christ, we praise you. We worship and adore you. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. For the peace of Christ, we praise you. We worship and adore you. For Christ our Redeemer, in the power of the Spirit, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and here, now and forever. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This bread we 
pray is a sharing in the body of Christ. We give you our name, our own body, but we all share our prayer. The cup of blessing for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. My dear friends, these are the gifts of God. They are bread and they are wine. The gifts of God for all the people of God. May we please share these gifts. Be found in Christ and Christ in us.
Go forth into the world rejoicing in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.